welcome to Hainao Daily. I'm Rachel Pokaro, and you know, it is day three for me here on Maui. We are in West Maui right now, and I'm very excited to be bringing you the show from the Valley Isle because there's so much to talk about, right? It's coming up almost on a year since the devastating wildfires back in August, and we really are here to support the nonprofits and the community um, however we can. And right now, I'm here with Kaipo Kekona. He is the co founder of Napili Noho, which is set up here at this community park. So, thank you so much for having us in this space today. We want to just talk story with you about what you folks are doing here at Napili Noho. It's been, what, 10 months now? Yes, so um, we're here in a park located a little north of Lahaina Town. Uh, we started off here with our community, a handful of neighborhood families that uh, got together and started to serve our community. We were all born and raised here, multiple generations in those families that are part of this community. And so with that being said, we're passionate on you know, servicing our community and being there to help and support our community as needed. So we built up this residency distribution hub as it is. Uh, started off right here in this park, uh, just a few tents. And um, we've built on and kept going on there with support systems from around the state. Uh, different organizations showed up, community members, and all that kind of network started to happen and build out. We just continued to move forward and built up a system where uh, we now have been able to maintain our operations and services for the past 10 months and um, we continue to keep going with that. Incredible. I mean, we were walking around earlier, we were taking a look at what was under the tents, what was inside of the containers. So if you can kind of tell me a little bit about what's going on here, like what's going on under the, these tents. Yeah, so first off, we started off with whatever we could get. So it was community contributing their own stuff from their households. And as that started to progress with support from our neighboring islands and all those resources started to come in, we found the need to expand more on our operations and be able to hold more capacity. So we sourced out through our community different uh, storage containers and we brought those into the park and we started to build up a system that was a little bit more uh, suitable to meet those needs. We were under tents in the beginning and we quickly realized with weather conditions that those tents weren't going to sustain our operations so we built out some of our more um, stronger structures so that we could serve that need in a better capacity. Wow now let's talk about Napili Noho this area when you know the fires just happened you guys jumped into action and what was going on around here I know you guys did a lot for the keiki a lot for the kupuna um, it was really that community that came together to set this up and why it's still here today? Yeah, so we today we we currently serve roughly about 270 individuals and the household number is behind that. I don't know those numbers off the top of my head, but we definitely saw the need to comfort the community, so we wanted to provide like a more of a community vibe. So we started to put on some events that we found was instrumental servicing our children and the and the elders that broke down some of those barriers that our community had and allowed them to better acclimate to our, our conditions and status. And that's how we found success in being able to serve and continue to serve. Um, of course, that started to build up as we got further into the um, situation. We found higher needs and we, need, we knew that we needed to network with more organizations. And so we began to look at those situations and serve those. So we have everything from uh, hygiene to food and produce, some of it locally sourced, we prioritize that. Uh, we had tools, we've had laptops and school supplies, we've had all of that come through here. At one point we were housing all the pets that were showing up right out of the fire and then working with the uh, society to handle that, the animals took on there. So we, at one point we were kind of like a vet too. Yeah. We had uh, all kinds of stuff that happened and we opened up to whatever our community brought forward and they felt there was a need or they needed help with and we were happy to see how we can accommodate that and meet their needs. Incredible and you were just saying just trying to just bring a little bit of normalcy back into everybody's lives. Even the keiki, you guys had all kinds of action over here for the keiki. I mean we're looking at a jumpy house. You guys set that up every day for them to come and enjoy, put some smiles on their faces. You guys had some hay rides. You guys did like a haunted house. Anything to kind of get them smiling. I mean, I know you said there's yoga, there's like massage back here. So just trying to, you know, bring a little bit of normalcy back into their lives, right? Yeah, I, um, I struggle with saying normalcy because normalcy is pretty difficult to grip on today. But we do try to find a space to hold for our community to just not feel like they're a survivor, not feel like they have to be uh, searching for 
a system that can support them. We wanted to let them know that we're with them 100% along the way, and we're going to continue to be there as long as we can. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how we try to build our foundations, and obviously our kids are the window to that. It kind of helps us um, be able to meet each other on right. common ground, yes. knowing that we all care for our children, and so we serve that. We, we put events together, we partner up with all our different organizations. Um, Boys and Girls Club was very instrumental in the beginning, putting together programs. Uh, Kohuku, the Kohuku community, I think they have a, I'm trying to remember the name of the organization, but they came through in the very beginning and brought over some of these storage pods and yeah, we started to expand on those operations and just continue those, those needs. Uh, we found our self in conversations with Pesha Shipping Company mm -hmm. and they also wanted to support so we built up on that and we kept going and now we have extensive inventories and we continue to try and distribute what we have and what's available. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Now we are going to take a quick break but uh, when we come back we're actually going to be heading underneath the tent and going to see the distribution, how it all works and there's canned foods, all kinds of stuff in there to help the community. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more of Hainao Daily here from Maui.